Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another episode of the Ashish David Show. And uh, off late, you know, uh, initially the problem in life was, "Mujko coronavirus nahi hona chahiye." I should not get coronavirus. The whole world can go to. And the <laughs> biggest problem was, I should not get the coronavirus. Now that is not a problem. Now the main problem is. How do I spend my time? Because I can't go out. I can't meet my friends. I can't hit on the opposite sex. I can't be hit by the opposite sex. Um, I'm sick of my drawing room, my living room. Plus, if people are sharing houses with somebody, now they are sick of that person also. Forget the relationship. <laughs> All right. So right now, generally, people are very, very irritated, very um, edgy, and I thought, you know. in the middle of all this if i can just bring a little bit of entertainment to you guys because uh, i'm not in delhi in india so unfortunately or fortunately i'm right now in another country and uh, this is the only way that i can actually enter people's living rooms and bring what my conversation is to you which is why this is happening and which is what brings me to my current guest right now mr winston ballman bro <laughs> how are you doing my man what's up what's up, what's up? I'm doing great, my man, and uh, um, just uh, you know, biding time in the lockdown is what was what I'm actually doing. <laughs> Bro, tell me, who all are you sharing your house currently with, and are all of them still alive? <laughs> well, ah, wow, that's... <laughs> okay, okay, uh, you know, I, I I can answer the question. I'm not afraid. Yeah, so I'm sharing my house with my girlfriend and her brother, and also my uh, fourth family member, that is my dog. and he's just about lying right around there chilling out his name is kalel all kalel, right kalel uh, is the birth name of superman from krypton whoa 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 he's not just a dog he's a super dog dude yeah it's quite an animal yeah but he's just the most amazing thing out there yeah so 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 is everything all right in your apartment bro is like are, are you people getting like edgy are you <laughs> <laughs> who's getting most well, irritated who's I mean, losing their cool the most I think uh, I mean amongst all of us we've been quite cool but the the one individual that's having the most issues with everybody is the dog itself because he's not used <laughs> to having us around <laughs> he's not used to having us around so much so when he has all all his humans around him and all his humans giving him a lot of attention all the time he's like eh you know i've had enough of you guys can you just stop like i don't need all that attention all the time well it may need you yeah i don't look uh, apart from that like you know my girlfriend her brother myself we've been pretty cool um we live in uh, i i would say slightly the outskirts of delhi so we live on purpose uh, uh, outside delhi so we're relatively out of the hot zones or should i say the green zones and uh It's been actually great for us because I've been able to write more songs, and uh, everybody else has been off of work, so they've been able to pick up a hobby, sing songs with me, you know. And uh, I've actually enjoyed the lockdown, really. That is I've that is really enjoyed. nice. That's really nice to hear, like a different, you know, um, opinion of somebody who's in a lockdown. Uh, Winston, for like I've known you for how many years now? At least I think. One and a half, two years, two and a half, three years, approximately. More, more, yeah. More, Probably more, man. I think it's been about four years. Four Around years. four years. So, for people who don't yeah. know anything about you, Winston, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, tell us, tell us about uh, who you are, what you do. So, uh, for everybody who's out there on the Ashish David show, I would like to introduce myself. I am Winston Ballman. I am also a singer-songwriter. Slash, uh, in the day, I also double. as a conceptualizer or should i say the ideation person i do a lot of copywriting work etc 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 i am basically the idea person in a lot of uh, in a lot of companies and they consult me a lot but my ultra ego is actually a singer song writer i perform with a band called the prophets of rock together we are known as winston ballman and the prophets of rock we are uh, we are you know from delhi we are this is a delhi born band and uh, we generally play country rock so i bring in the country influence and everybody else together we bring in the rock influence so it's called country rock and that's pretty much about uh, the music front but i as a person i'm a very chilled out guy i like to keep uh, things very simple live a simple life you know and uh, not get into too many people's heads too quickly but with my songs i want to be in your head all the time <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing man so uh winston i'm i'm just you know straight getting to the point man uh 
country sure. music okay now country music is basically when normal people and i'm when i say normal people i mean like people who are exposed to western music who listen to western music when they think of country music like you know either john denver country roads come to their mind okay <laughs> or <laughs> or uh, you know one or two maybe songs come to their mind and in india i think um, the person who comes to people's mind is bobby cash exactly so you know like there aren't too many uh, people who are taking the country music scene forward especially in the indian context especially in the delhi context so tell us about like you know how how did country music begin for you why country versus anything else um I think that's a that's a great question, Ashish. Fantastic question. Thank you for asking me the question. Is uh, I don't get to answer this question a lot, but I I'm I mean I'm welcoming this question because this question really brings out the you know the business end and then the artistic end and what I I generally like to call it the you know the the craft and the art. My influence with country is because uh, I'm an Anglo-Indian boy. My uh, nationality is Indian, but I have. Uh, a slight of an anglo side also uh from my family so the anglo indian uh, influence uh come uh, or the let's see the community or the culture comes with a lot of country a lot of uh, yeah a lot of country music for sure and uh, when i'm talking about that kind of country i'm talking about jim reeves i'm talking about you know like dolly parton by my don williams i'm talking about enrique iglesias's father Julio Iglesias, and I'm talking about the old stuff. What we talk about today, in when we when we talk about in India in the country scene, at max, like if a kid is, you know, really up with the music scene, he'll definitely know people like Chris Stapleton, Blake Shelton, etc., etc. You know, so these are the new country faces that we are seeing today in, in mainstream. But why I chose country is simply because not just my roots that come from an anglo indian family that has a lot of country influence um but also because country is a form in which you just simply tell simple stories about simple people about simple living and it is the most relatable way of bringing out a story which might not make a lot of sense to a lot of high profile people but to you and me it's your story and mine that was something that i really enjoyed about country music and i and i and i think that it it's almost like india mein jaise kehte hain like you know we have these uh bolia yeah, yeah you know we have these things so so it's it's pretty much the same thing only you know <laughs> over here it's got the country twang you know the country twang exactly. but then, yeah that was the country twang is basically it's again it's a style you know it's it's a style it's a genre i liked it i i connect to it very much and uh, believe it or not but there are actually a lot of uh, people who do like country uh, uh in the in the country the only thing is they don't know that they've been listening to country for a long time they just think angrezi gana <laughs> you know so and uh, when i tell them hey man did you know that uh, blake shelton actually has sung a lot of country songs are wo to pop star hai he's a you know uh, he's a judge in this american talent show i said yeah that's right but he's also a country music artist you've heard his music right oh yeah i like that song he said that's country music so then they're like quite shocked like wow i was having this uh, conversation with this boy listening to a lot of new music and he says man have you heard justin timberlake's new song his new album and i'm saying yeah and he's actually doing country music right now I was taken back to a time where I was working as a backup vocalist in this oh, yeah. band called Euphoria, all right? And uh, okay, okay. Well, Euphoria being Euphoria being like, you know, one of the biggest like bands, one of the biggest bands in the country. Uh at least as far as the basically they were the band who took Hindi language and made it into a band format and you yeah, know, made it to mainstream. Brought it to the mainstream. And I remember touring with uh you know euphoria like there was a time when i had sung backup vocals on their mehfooz album and uh, we were doing like around 26 gigs in a month and we were touring the whole country and one of the conversations you know i had uh, with the band members were like a lot of these people who used to drive these taxis and take us to different venues okay were inevitably punjabis okay they were either <laughs> sardars or they were punjabi people uh, from punjab okay and what i realized was 
how similar bro country music is to punjabi folk music and i don't know if how many people you know watching this right now realize but punjabi folk music is a cult okay it's a cult That's in 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 the entire punjab region and the format is very much similar to a country music because in all in all country songs uh, you know they have a story right there is a story from the beginning till the end and of course there are stories in other genres also but in particular uh, you know how uh, interwoven it is with human emotions and how how close it is to the ground reality of people like you and me like you know uh, the true. the street kids or like aam aadmi janta bol lo aap jo bhi bolo that is a connection that even yeah. i have seen with a lot of although i don't understand unfortunately i don't understand punjabi much but uh, every story you know has every song has a story which is really really cool i think and that is one of the reasons why i really love uh, country music a lot as well there's nothing to hate about country music unless of, uh, unless of course if you if you can't tolerate a certain dynamic like a lot of people don't like you know the extra twang or they don't like a certain era of country music over the years you know so that's that that's a that's a very personal choice like i personally did not like uh, you know the late 90s version of country music all right because uh, back then uh, the late 90s version of country music was in this uh, transition of uh, you know mixing it digital and old school con- uh, conventional country so it was like this new age technology mixing <laughs> with con- you know conventional and then all of a sudden they had this weird very aggressive drums and you know so it was it, it didn't really sit with me but now country music is literally become the last bastion of rock and roll uh, to you know if you think about it and if you listen carefully you literally hear pretty much every other um drift that you find in country music that's a basic pad uh, a progression for most country songs is old pop rock and if you i mean if you think deeper then it's basically the last passion of rock and roll and i think country music is doing a great job um coming coming back to uh, answering a little bit for the first question and what you just said right now yes uh if it's a song about you and me if it's a song about common life if it's a song about emotion it's if it's a song about how basic humans you know just connect and connecting not just with each other but just simple things maybe your tractor maybe your jeep maybe your guitar maybe a old sofa something that has an emotional connection and you can ring a story around it has that has that you know dynamic to pull in real emotion so that that's very important i think to uh, recognize and and indians love emotion you know so a lot of my songs when i sing them and i sing them you know to them very personally they get extremely emotional like you just took me back to a certain era in my life you took me back to a place where i'm like i can't stop thinking about it right now i'm just you know wow and it's really it's really nice i being one of the few people who took up the chance to country music a lot of people come and say to me hey babe ko fad me kya country music kaun sun raha tumko yahan pe all right and i <laughs> right ki angrezi gaane gaane the to koi cd bhi nahi sun leta radio nahi sun leta i have to reply to tell them you know yaar angrezi aur hindi ka koi scene nahi hota music is music all right agar main is yes, uh, if i go around with this attitude agar hindi gaane nahi sunne the to main to tumhe kyun sun raha hota live or listen to the radio or the thing again so it's it's not this division it is simply the fact that i find myself in an advantage in india today because i'm the one of the few people who do it and when i'm the few people who do it they might be only out of 5 million 5000 who are listening to me but those 5000 are my 5000 so whether it takes 5000 to become 50000 in 5 years or 2 years that's still my audience and that's a very connected wholesome happy audience that is happy to listen to this kind of thing. in a culture like delhi you know where most people yeah. are not even listening to english music per se like in the english language is it difficult for you to you know sort of um get regular work and what are the struggles that you face because i have personally faced this as you know the lead vocalist of a blues band 
Now, blues is another genre which faces, you know, similar problems where people don't really understand what is blues. And uh, you're doing another, you know, segregated uh, sort of genre, which doesn't have that much yeah. of an audience. And what are the problems that you face because of this? Well, let's begin with the fact that uh, lack of musical education is one huge problem. And that's uh, not anybody else's problem, that is my problem. Um, why? Because uh, that's a problem I face as an artist, or let's say an independent struggling artist, or you could say anybody who's a beginner. I'm not a beginner anymore, but then I know anybody else who's going to do something like this is going to face this problem for sure. Is why would anybody want to listen to what you're doing and you're trying your best to separate yourself? Like I am, I do country music, or let's say you were doing blues music. You're trying to separate yourself from the crowd and you're trying to do something different, you're trying to be your own person and everybody's like, why do I need to listen to you? I mean, there's already so much there to listen to you. The truth is, one of the biggest problems you're going to uh, have to face is, um, do you believe in what you do or not? Uh, finding work is a huge problem, not today. It'll be a huge problem when you'll be very successful also. Because there'll be some other trend that will be following right behind you or right ahead of you that's way better than you or you think it's not better. So, share ka babbar share to hota hai. But you have to analyze, yeah, you have to analyze and accept the fact that your music is a work of art and you have to separate art and craft. So, when your music is your message to society or your message to the human beings of the world or your message as an artist to people, you need craft or business or marketing to put it out there. So, the combined effort is the only way you can do that. And as as an independent artist, uh, this is one thing that I was definitely put across, is that um, you are doing the right thing by separating yourself from other people, by doing something different, that's for sure, you're doing something absolutely fantastic, but you've got to stick to your guns. Everybody has this uh, thing that if you're doing Bollywood, you're doing great. The truth is, you're not doing great, because you and 10,000 others with their grandmothers are doing Bollywood right now, live. All right. But... If you're doing if you're doing blues, there's probably going to be maybe a thousand other bands who are doing blues. So maybe if there are only a hundred opportunities, those ten who are going to get there are the best ten blues bands that are going to get there. So you have a better chance being at the best of what you're at. Stick to your guns and get maybe recognition for what you do. Yes, uh, it is difficult, you know, on many levels. Like a lot of people find employment a huge issue in this case. But then um, you've got to live like Batman. I think so. You've got to be Bruce Wayne in the, in the day and you've got to be Batman at night. So it's a balance you make for yourself. And once you hit that balance, once you're level-headed enough and you're matured enough to understand that this is not just two years ki kahani, this is going to be peace years ki kahani where eventually when I see myself in 20 years, I will have these many albums to my name. I'll have this much recognition to my name. I'll have so many people who know me because it's a tenure that you put in, it's a constant effort. So self-belief, perseverance, and these are the things that you have to hold on to. What you've got to be wary of and what you need to know is social discrimination, uh, social disrespect, um, depression, um, anxiety, uneasy feeling of never knowing where the next paycheck is going to come. That's only if you're depending on music completely if you're doing a specialized genre that's one thing you remember but you you've got to balance this out in your mind because you should know that you are an anomaly in the mass and being an anomaly is great and negative also at the same time because you've got to balance your trade so art craft the mixed balance and then living a batman life is what i suggest to do to battle the you know uh, the whole thing about being an independent artist yeah, that's and for a lot of people who don't know this about Winston, I have to tell you guys that he's also into motorcycles, by the way. Something you didn't mention, <laughs> my friend. So, oh, yeah. so uh, yeah, he, he, he sort of, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but he uh, custom makes motorcycles for you if you have a special demand or if you have, you know, if you don't like the size of your bike's tank or something, he'll change it for you. He does all kinds of stuff. Tell us a little bit about that as well. Oh, wow. Yeah, um, yeah I am quite a petrol head and I love everything mechanical. Um, sometimes I wonder if I, uh, you know, didn't go ahead and get an MBA's degree, I would have actually probably, you know, gone and learned how to do 
uh, mechanical work and probably got an engineer's degree. But then, that is correct. I have a great uh, affinity towards two wheels. And yeah, if you if you've got uh, a vision and if you trust my uh, vision on how I build two wheelers, and if you want something special, unique that is to you, that's individual to you, I will build it. I'll and and I've built quite a few bikes up till now for a lot of friends of mine, and uh, they've been very happy. Some of these bikes that I've built have been, you know, that have gone uh, literally cross country. And they come back in one piece, not broken, not damaged. And uh, you know, my the people that have built these bikes for so them love these bikes. So yeah, I do have a big affinity towards motorcycles. I own four of my own, all of them wow. are custom. <laughs> and it's a big hassle, man. Parking is such an issue. You have no <laughs> idea. Like, even in my own house, parking is an issue. Like, it's like you can't park it in a certain way because it's custom. Because if you park it in a certain way, then you're always afraid that कई गाड़ी पलट क्यों नहीं जाएगी? Because uh, custom bikes, yeah, custom bikes are not like your normal average run-of-the-mill, you know, splendors popping out or an Enfield popping. Out. Custom bikes are all about like you know, statement, a, po- a posture, a style, you know, <laughs> and The uncompromising part of the posture, style, statement is that, "Hi, there are some water, water is getting stained. Paint, the paint job is so delicate. You know, like you can't go out riding a bike in bad weather. You, <laughs> I can yeah. imagine, man. Yeah. I can But imagine. I love But, riding. But it's great to know that you know you have diversified yourself in so many different aspects. Like you're you're making music, you're performing live, you're you know making custom bikes from time to time. You are also working as a idea consultant. So, um, coming back to your music, uh, Winston, you released an EP called Marijuana Highway, which, by the way, in case you guys don't know, is available on Spotify. It's available on Apple Music, on uh, Google Music, on uh, of, uh, many other platforms, including I think so- SoundCloud, if I'm not wrong. And uh, tell us uh, a little bit about the album. Tell us about about the album. You know how it. Uh, came to place and um t- tell us about marijuana highway man <laughs> like the ep the extended play that we released marijuana highway was uh our first attempt to bring out a, a production ready you know studio edit of our songs that we play live on a very regular basis with people used to enjoy that which is our own material so we decided like you know like people like our songs so why not give them something they can listen to any time wherever they are so Uh, we decided to record this album, and Marijuana Highway, being one of the hits amongst them, was one part of them. So the album is called Marijuana Highway, which actually signifies uh, a journey that I take uh, a person takes from his monotony in life to a place of, uh, you know, freedom, a place of, you know, thoughtlessness, bliss, and I. Symbolize that uh, idea in the song as a woman. So I refer to that uh, idea as a woman. So But for all those people, songs. you know, who are who are watching this interview and who are thinking that uh, Winston is trying to promote any kind of narcotic use, no, it's all symbolism. the The word is supposed to symbolize a woman because you know narcotics yes. can sometimes be seductive and alluring. That is what the woman is, and uh, not to be Absolutely. taken literally, children. For all you underaged young people, you know uh, that is not the message being given here. It's all symbolism. You have to read between Absolutely. the lines. Absolutely, and uh, that's one hundred percent correct. Tell us a little bit about you know what was the production process like? Uh, what is the response that you got? What are the songs about? And maybe uh, after that, uh, you can sing one of the songs. The production uh, was. Uh You know, very simple. We decided to keep the songs uh, as bare bones as we can, and uh, literally do it like you know things were done back in the 80s and 90s. Basically, we take all our instruments and we go to a studio, hit the studio, and then we produce it sonically at the best as it can. And uh, the songs were hometown. There was uh, it's a song about me missing Deradun, and then there's another song called uh, Twice Shy. That's kind of a revengeful, hurtful, you know, I'm giving it back to you kind of a song, but it's also kind of a song that also projects that how you give up on somebody and that somebody becomes someone and then you have regret. 
So that's for the other person to think of. But on the person who's singing that song, that's more about the fact that you giving me up just makes me do a little better now because now I have drive. <laughs> <laughs> so once loved, twice shy. So <clears throat> that right. was that part of the song. And then there's two, uh, the other song is Hot Mama Blues, which is a complete Chichora song. Every every EP, every album should always have one Chichora song. So that Hot Mama Blues was one of that. And you, Ashish, you did you worked on that song for us. I remember really well. All right. For uh, for, for those people who don't know, uh, how I met Winston was um, basically Winston had come to me. He wanted two songs to be made, and that is how Winston and you know my like yeah. uh, friendship actually began. I think that was the moment right. when we met each other for the first time. Yes. And it was a wonderful journey to make like those two songs, Hot Mama Blues, and the other one, Small Town. Style. Small Town style. Small yes. Town. Um, Small Town Style was also included in this EP and uh, Small Town Style actually being quite a quite a hit man because like we were thinking that uh, um, Twice Shy and all the other songs will be will do really well because they, they have a little bit of a tempo, they have a little bit of a message and you know a lot of different lines in between the lyrics here and there but Small Town became like a song that everybody just iconically understood uh, when we when we sang that song because um, prior to the EP release, we had released Small Town as a single, just like as a, you know, hey, this trailer is more than So <laughs> we released Small Town style, and it, I mean, it was a blast because I remember getting uh, uh, reports from my uh, distributor saying that your song has actually started trending in New Zealand and Australia, and here I am sitting in Delhi in the metro, like, what are you doing? I'm very angry. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it was it was it was absolutely fantastic because, and after that, small towns started getting aired on different radio channels, independent music radio channels, and a, and a lot of people were talking about it. And I think what was really cool about small town style, which again, ladies and gentlemen, I must remind you, small town style was a song that Ashish actually sang backing with me. And he helped me arrange the song, produce the song. He's actually the producer of that song, Small Town Style. So this is actually congratulating you, Ashish. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I can't forget CB is Den, the studio. I'm, that was the <laughs> studio for me. Like, I could just sit there, chill, watch everything. Like, you know, everybody crash. <laughs> and then Ashish was like, no, wait. I'll do this and you do this. And, ah, we have direction. <laughs> oh, fun times, fun times. Um, that was that was a great experience, man. And I actually like you know yeah. look forward to working with you, uh, inshallah, sometime in the future. Whenever I am back to India, because uh, yeah, man, I mean yeah. like a, a, a sound engineer or music producer, you know, it's his dream to work with artists who are passionate about their craft, you know. So yeah. you're one of them, man. And uh, kudos to all the good work that you've done. So now I think, Winston, we've talked to them about your art. Now I think we need to make them listen to a song. 65 plus countries are listening to you right now. So the get up better be tuned. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And it's the only instrument we have, but let's do this. Let's do this. I'll be singing my country song. I don't 
don't need this fancy ass job And these things just my guitar and a crowd Sing alone Makes me wonder What's up down in Clementine's Oh, I'm going Yes, I'm going Going on a small town in your city Yeah, it's gonna drink Near a river Don't up on that good fish fry We're gonna do this more town style Lovers love them candles and love never go old Friends will toast their drinks for the kids and I have to tell you, Winston, my favorite line from that song is double up on that good fish fry. <laughs> Man, every time I hear, you know, every time I hear the song, that is the one line which just like, you know, suddenly like if I'm doing something, I'll be like, oh, fish fry. I'm like, <laughs> so, 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 so tell us a little bit also, t- tell us a little bit also about, you know, um, the instances that you've talked about in this song, like, you know, about the fish fry and your moments in Clementown and like, like, tell, tell people about that, man. Like, so, I mean, guys, I, I'm from, uh, so, I mean, I'm from Dehradun and uh, Dehradun, uh, my God, I can't speak, so excited. Uh, <laughs> so, I'm from Dehradun and there's this place, uh, it's called the Cant area, but it used to be, it's, it's called uh, Clementown. And just a little bit of trivia for you guys to know why does why did they call it uh, Dehradun or let's say Dehradun is because once a long long time ago a lot of these people from uh, Punjab used to come to Dehr, uh, come to Dehr, uh, Dehradun uh, because they used to have a dera. It was a big jhandega mela that used to happen. Okay. And they used to sing the song Asi Dere Ni Jana Re Asi Jana Ni Dera Dun. Oh. It was it was beautiful. So the so when the Brits when they showed up, they said they heard the song. Hey, let's name this place Derridan. <laughs> so, um, that's pretty much it. Um, but Clementown, Clementown is where I'm from, and uh, Clementown is like, I mean. I haven't been to Clementown for so long, but it, it's it's always home. Whenever you listen, think about Clementown, you think about you know, like this one road, which was the only road that had all the shops and the stores called the Turner Road. Okay. And it had all the nice schools out there. I grew, I studied in St Jude's School, which was not too far away from Clementown, maybe about five minutes away, and everybody was you know very close to each other because it was a small. A small settlement, and it was basically a very British settlement, Anglo settlement, or should I say, a very white settlement. To, and uh, and Clementown is a place uh, uh, where you now you'll find a lot of these colleges, you'll find a lot of youngsters, a lot of young people out there now, and it's got the monastery, the Gumba, and it's just a wonderful place in Derry. It's just that it's got the perfect mix of young and the old. And and it's just perfect. And that's where I also met uh, Bobby, Bobby Cash. Because uh, when I was living in Clementown, Bobby wasn't too far away. So as a kid, we would we would you know stumble across these guys of six foot two and you know with a guitar with long hair, and he'd be singing you know Patsy Cline song or know, <laughs> anything from Bill Jennings. And you're like, what is this guy doing? <laughs> but then, you know, as you started listening to these people, and these are big influences of mine. I, I, I even sing about him in this song. Yes. Um, yeah. So, 
Bobby is one of the most important reasons why I moved so far into country music. He showed me that you can use a unexplored form of uh, genre in India and use it to your advantage and actually do it really nicely. So um, that's that. And Clementown, why is this song so important about, uh, why is this city so, town so important in the song for me is because uh, Clementown is 100% Nostalgia. It is, I think, um, the one place if you go to Clementown today, you'll see that it is developed, but it still retains that old school vibe in it. And it still retains that happiness of youngness and the blend between old and new. Whereas Correct. many other places in uh, Derudun and the other places, let's say other cities, have completely transformed into these, you know, manic commercial you know, machines. And Clementown still has that little rustic, that little organic thing going on. So that's uh, what I miss a lot when I came to De uh, Delhi. So I wrote the song. Pretty much it. Superb. So tell us, uh, Winston, which is the latest song, uh, Sense of It All, which you've just released? Tell us a little bit about it. And uh, oh, I, I know you, you said you're not going to do it, but uh, I'd love it if you could, you know, maybe sing one paragraph of the song so that people get a little sense get a little sense of it and <laughs> and then we can direct them um, to Spotify and Apple Music. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you exactly what the song is all about and why is this song, uh, I mean, why did we record the song and why is it so significant? Why did it be called Sense of It All actually? So yes, it's our re latest release and the band and I are like super, super excited about it. We released the song on the 27th of April and uh, the Spotify results came back as it was streamed like it just bombed on, on Spotify. People went nuts. Like we had 300 streams happening in an hour in wow. India. So uh, that is a huge number for an independent band coming up. So that also a new band like us, which was enormous when we got that. But Sense of It All is basically the story of how an independent artist has to do what he has to do to eventually may or may not reach his destiny. And this person does not have to be a singer, a musician, an artist. This person can be a striving civil engineer, a striving, maybe a guy who's trying to crack a, uh, maybe trying to crack a, uh, you know, exam. Uh, could be any person trying to fight against a big, you know, mountain. And in this, in this case, this was set up around, you know, the, 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 the story set up around an artist. So an artist has to fight social discrimination, discrimination constant uncertainty with uh, income. Uh, also, there's, a st uh, there's this kind of a stigma that you face amongst your family. Oh, he's different. ये <laughs> misunderstood by your own people in your own uh, genre or your own sphere of work and you're constantly trying to balance so everything that we spoke about hitting the right balance this song is the manifestation of that entire thing and uh, I think 2018 uh, profits were having a little bit of a rough patch because in between I don't know what really happened but the economy with the live scene in Delhi kind of slowed down and not a lot of gigs were in, uh, in place. And we would we could notice that a lot of our friends were being cheated. A lot of our payments were getting held back. And I remember that, that time, man. I remember that time very clearly. Yeah. And uh, I decided, man, this is, this is a collective suffering. And it's something that I I recognize it. I get it. So, Everybody who's been in a creative form, creative uh, line, uh, you know, who has 
some inclination to the fine arts will identify to this 100 percent yeah let's do another song from the previous album uh, from the previous uh, ep from marijuana Highway. all right <laughs> Now, uh, should I do Marijuana High with a cover song? Whichever one you want to, man. So, I'm going to do Marijuana High with the cover song. Pop this up. This song, man. This is such Thank an amazing, nice I, song. I was kind of breaking a sweat over there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, talking about breaking a sweat, man. Um, so, the COVID nineteen pandemic lockdown. Oh, oh my God! Like oh, yeah. you know, it's 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 break. It's making everybody break into a sweat right now. Um, what, what what's happening with the gig industry, man? Like what is happening in Delhi right now? Tell us about that. Um. Um, I think uh, first thing that everybody should uh, realize is that the fact that it's 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 a virus. It's not a human problem where hey, I got an attitude issue, so I'm still gonna go out because I want to go out. No, it's it's a virus, and it's easily you know reaching everybody. And if you're not responsible, then it's gonna just ruin everything. So. As as individuals, be it whoever you are out there, just stay home. Try and distance yourself. Why? Because this is what's going to stop it. So 
this message is already out there. A lot of people know this, but a lot of us human beings have a problem with authority and you know uh, taking care of rules. But what this uh, disease, this pandemic, has done to the economy is just like it's it's wow, man. Like um, the worst hit, the FMCG, uh, uh, the entertainment industry, uh, uh, and uh, the event industry, the tourism industry, these are the worst hit. And, you know, the, the frontier people of these industries, like people like me, the artists, or people who are working in the event industry, the, the frontier people, they are the worst affected. And many of them just don't know what to do because like everybody knows uh, in this business, uh, especially in India, since it's not completely organized, you're not, you're not sure whether you're gonna get paid on time or is it gonna come a little later. So. Things are always there, and there are a lot of people who haven't gotten paid for previous gigs since you know all sorts of things. So there's a lot of uncertainty again. There's a lot of frustration. There's a lot of all of all these things happening. But I'm still kind of seeing the lockdown uh, kind of uh, you know kind of positively because I mean I'm just a positive guy. But um, yes, there's no gigs right now. Yes, there's. Uh, we're not looking at having too many gigs in the near future. Uh, yes, we're looking at a situation where public gatherings are going to become a huge problem because COVID-19 now is a part of human life. And my dog's getting irritated right now. Um, but what we need to understand is, is it's not going to be like this all the time. Things have just changed and you have to change with it. So. Um, if you're not having gigs like you used to have before where you had like a bunch of people and you're going nuts, no, uh, things are going to be slightly different. So um, things are going to be more like you and me right now. Like there are going to be more personal gigs happening. So I'm going to be singing for my fan who wants me to sing a song for him today or tomorrow. So those gigs are start going to happen. Gigs where smaller crowds are, start, uh, are going to start happening. So artists just need to realize that they have to conform to change, they have to be with the change, and they have to use their skill, use their talent to still make things happen for themselves. You can't keep waiting for somebody to make, uh, you know, uh, fix something for you. No, you've got to fix it for yourself. So, I mean, I in the lockdown have played about like at least six individual gigs uh, for different places, and I've, I've, I've had a lot of fun. And uh, it's just the beginning of this phase of people wanting to have personal concerts and I'm really calling them as personal concerts where you might have a family of four sitting in front of a webcam and there's and there's this guy sitting in Belgium and they want to listen and play a song for them and that's that might just be the future man and, and I think that's a huge opportunity for artists like just imagine me sitting in New Delhi right now in Mandi Hills in Delhi and there's some guy in New Zealand who says, hey, I heard that small town, small town song. Let me see if that guy's available. What if he wants to book me tomorrow and I'm available on a certain platform and bang, I'm playing for a fan in New Zealand. That's how, that's how we need to look at it as artists. That's how we need to look at this. So tell, tell us a little bit about these six uh, shows or performances that you did. Like, What were they exactly? Well, most of them are fundraisers, Ashish. Most of them are fundraisers because right now people fighting the pandemic to somehow stop it is is what we should all be, you know, uh, uh, you know, really concentrating on. Because these people are, I mean, these people are you and me out there wearing a mask and in the mix of it all trying to, you know, give out food to people, trying to give out medicines to people, trying to go to people's houses who are already infected. So that is huge, man. So there are a lot of NGOs who are trying to do this and all of this needs money. They only... Uh, the only shocking part is that um, <clears throat> uh, we've not been able to uh, we've not been able to uh, collect enough money for all of the effort because let's face it, India is a huge population, enormous. So everybody out there who can, all right. I'm not saying that you put in your personal uh, money into a donation. If you want to, great. But if you can do something to make the change, be the one to do it. Don't be the one who's sitting at the side, hey, the world is just a waste of time. I'm not going to get paid for it, or I'm going to get paid just so much for it. No, man. 
you're doing your bit and history knows uh, history is a witness ashish uh, uh, that i know is that whenever the world is in peril there's always the artists that <laughs> people are looking up to matlab artist log hi bach jate hain matlab ki kis tarah hope de de hum kisi you know are yaar you have the time in i am reminded of that like last last shot of uh, titanic the film titanic i was just going to say that oh my goodness See, we connected, bro. We think of the same thing. Puri naya dubri thi. Sab log mar rahe the aur ek banda violin baja raha tha. Ni ni ni. And see, that's that's exactly what you're doing. Whenever the world is in peril, it's always up to the artists to lift hope. And I don't want to be the snob and say that I don't want to help a fundraiser or I don't want to be the one to help in you know better the society or community or help. Make a change, no man. I want to be the one to help it, and and if I can sing a song for you, and you feel good about it, and you feel morally happy about it, I'm gonna do it, and I'm gonna do it as many times as I can. Thank you so much, Winston. I'm gonna request you to sing one last song, yeah. which, ah, uh, मतलब you it can be a cover, it can be a whatever, uh, you know, something that you really love uh, and you're really enjoying these days. Uh, could be your song, could be somebody else's song. uh but sing one last song for the audiences all over the world who are listening to you right now who are watching you right now sure i don't mind doing that um you know we when we when we started this uh when we started the uh, started this conversation you know how like we <laughs> went across the fact that when everybody thinks about uh, country music everybody thinks of john denver some some right yes 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 <laughs> Oh you're going to sing John like, Denver do do it do it do it <laughs> All right uh, No hold on a second John Denver yaar aisa ho jayega ki matlab ki wo cliche ho jayega sabko pata hai ki main wohi gana gaane wala so let me Yeah matlab agar see if someone goes to Mulchand Parathe wala wo agar aloo ka parathe dega to it will be too predictable So yeah okay, okay. you have to give something else now <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah i'm i'm going to probably i'm thinking yeah you know like uh, i'm thinking you're doing uh, you guys remember glen campbell yes yes so i'm thinking you're doing rhinestone cowboy yeah course. do that that's that's one of my all time favorite songs <laughs> So long, singing the same old song. I know every crack in these dirty sidewalks are broken. Hustle's the name of the game. Ice guys get washed away like the snow in the rain. There's been a lot of compromising. On a road to my horizon, I'm gonna be where the light can shine on me, yeah. like a rhinestone cowboy. Gonna ride on a horse and start spinning the rodeo, like a rhinestone cowboy. Getting caught. People I don't even know. When I first come over the phone, well I even know my name. My can I hide the pain? You're down when you're riding the train that's taking a long way. Dream of the things that I'll do. Subway token and a dollar tuck in my shoe. There's been a lot of compromising on the road on my horizon. I'm gonna be with the light to shine on me, yeah. Like a rhinestone cowboy. Let's 
running over the phone. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Winston Ballman. Thank you so much, uh, Winston Ballman and the Prophets of Rock. That is the band that you need to hear. Uh, you need to search on... Yeah, that's... <laughs> hey, man, where can... So, so now you need to tell me, Winston, where can people okay. find the music? What are the links? What are the Instagram handles? All that jazz. Of course, of course, of course. So, sorry, sorry. Um, all, that, all that country. Can't say jazz. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, not that we have anything, we don't have an issue with jazz. Yeah, you got no beef, you got no beef, you got no chicken, you got no mutton with jazz. Yeah, <laughs> I got none and problem, but none with jazz. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, the Instagram handle is, uh, I mean, if you go to Instagram, you can just find us as uh, WBXTPOR and we'll, you'll find us there immediately. So, it's... Uh, even if you just type uh, Winston Ballman and the Prophets of Rock, you should find it. But uh, WBXTPOR is... Uh, the short for Winston, Winston Ballman and yeah. the Prophets of Rock. And okay. the Prophets of Rock, yeah. So it's an abbreviation for the name. So you'll find us on Instagram. You'll find our latest posts and everything. And uh, you can find our music on Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, Amazon, Deezer, uh, Shazam, Yandex Music... Uh, Google Music, Google Music, Amazon Music, Amazon, uh, Amazon Music. You know, iHeartRadio. Pretty much, uh, you can you can you can find us on Savan. You can find us pretty much anywhere. You will even find us. You can I mean uh, find us on YouTube, which is on our uh, official YouTube uh, handle. Again, it's the same name, Winston Goldman and the Prophets of Prog. It's got a whole bunch of. Uh, you know, videos from our previous tours uh, and uh, a lot of our live shows, a lot of covers that we've done, and it's also got a recording of uh, a, a lot of stuff, man. And so there's a, a lot of content that we put out uh, on social media for our fans. Uh, and this is, I'm not just saying fans, this is really, you know, uh, an artist who's so happy to have these fans. Like we have. These people who listen to us, and if you want to be the next supporter, please support us because every stream, every song, every time you listen to us, is you know is, is we have a, a lot of gratitude for that because we we've come a long way what we're doing, and we're just happy when you enjoy it, and we we try to put our best foot forward. Thank you so much for your time, Winston. Thank you so much for your energy, for uh, your art that you shared with us. And hopefully I should yeah. share this with everybody all around the world. Uh, great yeah. to have you, man. And I'm looking forward to visiting Delhi uh, when the lockdown is hopefully down. And seeing you rock the stage like you always have every time I've seen you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ashish. Um, you know, today's interview, this, this whole thing, this whole uh, uh, time that we spent together... I'm just, you know what, being like a 80s, 90s kid, this is absolutely dope for me right now. <laughs> I'm talking to you with Oscar, right? and I'm sitting right now in my bedroom in uh, in New Delhi. I'm completely like exhausted with myself, I'm seeing my house, but I'm still being positive. And stuff like <laughs> this is so good, like it's the best thing out there. I mean, Guys, don't take this for granted. Yeah, bot maza hai mere ko. I'm truly delighted. Truly, truly delighted for being on this show, the Ashish David show. And if there's any time you're thinking about, uh, you know, something that's fun, something that's happy, something that's bringing new things to life, there should always be one name coming up. That is Ashish David. Ashish David, you are doing a great job. Thank you so much, my friend. And this is uh, to everybody, all the other artists and bands, you know, if you want to get on this show, it's really, really very simple. There's just one email address. It's it's always been the same. Tube light on at the rate gmail.com. Okay. Uh, it's spelled T-U-B-E-L-I-G-H-T-O-N at the rate gmail.com. As far as the podcast is concerned, it's on Spotify, it's on uh, Apple Podcasts, it's on Stitcher, it's on uh, pretty much uh, all the platforms out there on Google Podcasts as well. And of course, the video version is going to be available on Facebook and on YouTube. Thank you so much, Winston. And I shall see you rocking the stage and making great music and most importantly, keeping everybody around you positive and encouraged. See you, brother. Always. Take care and have a great thank you, day. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Bye, Ashish. Bye. Bye. Have a great, great time.